Hey everybody, it's Tanya Williams here from A Child Free Happily Ever After. I hope everyone is having a fabulous day. Let me just get this camera sorted so uh, that's too high so we can see everything that we need to. Okay, technical issues sorted. Um, wherever you are in the world, I hope the sun is shining just like it is here in Brisbane. It's 2 p.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time. Um, we're about to celebrate River Fire here this evening in Brisbane um, and see so lots of great fireworks and there's lots of great parties happening all over the city, which is going to be fabulous. So I am really excited about today's Child Free Choice Conversations and there's a very good reason for that. Well, there's a couple of good reasons actually. One is that I actually finally get a chance to take talk to a bloke. Um, I've been trying to get a guy to come on and talk to us for a little while and I'm really excited that we've got Troy coming on today to talk to us about his experience um, with this whole children versus no children and, and so forth. And, and Troy has a really interesting story to share. So I, um, I'm really excited for him to come on and actually share that with us today because I think it's one that um, is going to be, yeah, something that a lot of you are going to get a lot out of. And excuse one of my dogs being very naughty here and barking. <laughs> um, so yeah, so um, Troy will pop up shortly on the screen. Um, so once he does, I will then bring him through and we can have a chat um, to him about his experiences. In the meantime, don't forget, um, there's, there's lots of things happening moving forward. We've got a new website being built, which I'm fingers crossed will be ready within the next week and we can launch that to you. So the website's gonna be really a hub for everything around the child-free um, choices and also child-free happily ever after community. So the blogs will be on there, there'll be video content on there, um, all the event information and information about some of the programs that I'm working on and so forth are all gonna be in that one spot now. So it's been a bit higgle, higgledy piggledy up until till this point, but uh, once the new website launches, everything will be in that one spot and we really wanna build this community. So if you know other child-free women, please invite them to be part of our community. Um, and if you know people who are unsure if they want to have children, we'd love to have them as part of the community as well because we want this to be a really supportive um, place for people to come and ask questions if they're really not sure what it is they actually um, want to do. So hopefully, um, Troy is going to pop up here in a minute and we can pull him um, through and get the interview started. Are you around, Troy? I need you to uh, just to hop onto the page and um, yeah, once you do, I can see you and I can I can um, invite you to jump on and have a chat to us. So in the meantime as well, if you haven't got your copy of A Child Free Happily Ever After, I have plenty of copies here ready to go um, to brand new homes. And um, like always, it always helps authors when you buy the books directly from them, particularly if you are local, because that uh, puts a little bit of money back in our pocket from all the money we spent writing and creating these things. Um, so yeah, if you want a signed copy, please shoot me an email and I'm happy to, to shoot you out a signed copy regardless of where you are in the world because um, I have actually shipped um, one over to the US a couple of weeks ago. Um, so it doesn't matter where you are, we can get your copy. Um, and you know, it's, it's really great as I've been out talking um, to people out in the community about this very topic. The, the feedback has, has been really phenomenal in terms of not only the book, um, but the messaging and the fact that it's actually resonating um, with a lot of women, mums and non-mums. So I don't think it's just a read for um, child-free women. Obviously that's who the book was actually intended to, but I've had a lot of mums read it um, and were really interested by some of the content in there, um, really surprised by some of the experiences some of the women have had. Um, and I think it's a really important message and a lot of them are really loving the fact that it was all about um, choice, um, which is the key theme of the book. So uh, hopefully we'll have Troy coming through here soon. Let me just see if this is him watching. No, we've lost him. Yeah, around Troy. Let's see. Viewers. Nope, we're not having much luck, not popping up. Not popping up, Troy, if you are there. Um, let's try again, shall we? Gotta love technology, right? It's 
all fabulous when it's working and when it's not. Uh, here we go, here we go. Troy's popping up now. Awesome. Bring Troy on camera. Okay. To actually connect with Troy. Connecting. You should be seeing something coming through on your end now, Troy. Here we go. Yay! Hi! How are you? Yeah, great. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, you've just got to love technology, right? Because when it's working, it's all fabulous. But when it's not working, you just want to shake someone. Yeah. Oh, where is it? Yep. Here now. Hey. hey yeah, we on. got you now. We got you now. That's it. I'm here. I was just um, letting uh, letting everyone know, um, you know, obviously, we're, I was really excited to get a chance to, to talk to a bloke finally um, about this topic. And I suppose to give people a bit of background as well. So I met Troy through a mutual friend. Um, we actually um, met probably, probably the last uh, lunch that we went to about a month ago. And we started having a bit of a chat at the after drinks, as you do. And Troy shared his story with me and I was just blown away um, by his experience. And I've asked him to, to come on and, and share that experience with other people because I just think I, ha I have never heard a story like it. It's very unique. Um, and I think it has so much value for people out in the community to, to hear the story that, that Troy's going to share with us today. So firstly, thank you very much for being brave and getting on and sharing that story. I do really appreciate it. Absolutely. Happy to be here. Always happy awesome. to have a So, chat. Troy, just to get started, do you just want to um, tell people who you are, where you're from, um, maybe a little bit about what you do, um, maybe your, your marital status, your child status, that sort of stuff, and then we'll go into some of the uh, the questions that we're going to go to go through today. Okay, so you've got a couple of hours then. <laughs> <laughs> um, we might have to limit it on time, but we'll see how we go. Absolutely. Um, go on, just realised on my how much I look like I'm sunburned, but I, I think it's my, my trip from Thailand is I've oh, actually got a tan for the first time. Oh, you holidays to Thailand. I mean, uh, hello. Yeah, two weeks, that's it. Um, so, yeah, so what I what I do is I'm a, a business strategist um, around uh, structuring and, and growth strategies and really accelerating those growth strategies. That's what I do now. Um, I was an accountant for 10 years and I was a youth worker before that and I've done a whole range of different things and, you know, had a life um, rather than just the school uni work journey. So um, the marital stuff, that's probably where the, the juicy bit lies um, in that. Um, so married for the first time at 21 um, because uh, my partner was pregnant at the time um, and then divorced a few years later, had another relationship with um, and a whole raft of relationships and then married and divorced again already. And I don't look old enough to be divorced twice, but yep. Uh, don't. <laughs> uh, so yeah, it's, it's been a, a bit of a ride, uh, but I suppose one of the things through this conversation is uh, that while having have been in a number of relationships uh, and a couple of them with children that they weren't actually mine. So that's a little bit interesting. Yeah. So, okay. So you've gone there straight away. So let's yep. um let's do that. Share a bit. Of, let's start with the with the with the first marriage and and what the situation was um there with with the relationships and the and the and the child and so forth. Because um yeah, I think people would be really really interested to see what that looked like. So the so obviously we were very young uh, and uh, we were together for a while and then. Not, all of a sudden she said, look, uh, I'm pregnant. Uh, so there we go. That's that. And then a while later was that, uh, we should probably get married because we're having a child. Cause you know, that's the best reason to get married, of course. Uh, and it literally <laughs> was that conversation. It was, Oh, okay. So if we're going to have a child, we should probably get married so that we all have the same name. Yeah. Like it, that was as romantic as it got. Um, <laughs> and so afterwards, it, and, and that kind of kept the theme of the relationship. It's like this obligation, this responsibility, this expectation, this, uh, we really should do this or we really should do that. Um, and then, yeah, three years later, surprisingly enough, it, it didn't work out. And at the end of that, going through the divorce separation access with Bub situation, um, 
I basically said, look, you go your own way, I'll go mine. We'll just work out what the deal is with access with Bub. And she goes, well, there's not really a lot of point because she's actually not yours. Yeah, that that so, uh, that blew me away when you told me that story originally. I was like, "What?" Yep. So okay, so so yeah, can you can you share more around that? Because I think people will be interested to to know um, how that sort of unfolded. Well, it unfolded pretty quickly, really. Um, I mean, she was seeing somebody else uh, at the time, and I just my response. Were you aware that, of that? Uh, only for the last week or so of a lot okay. longer than that um, and I just I said you know what if that's where you're at and that's your decision there was no animosity there was no anger there was I mean, you're upset obviously there's a grief at the end yeah. of the relationship but that's where she was at and I was like you know you go do you you go be you whatever that is and you know make that choice and and go there um, and yeah by that stage there was clearly not a lot of love lost anyway but it was yeah. the it was basically the grief of losing the child. You know, it was this relationship, yeah. this, you know, I, I was daddy for, for three years and, you know, I did all the, all the, the, the daddy stuff, the, the nappies and the putting them to bed and the cuddling when, them, when they're sick and all the rest of it. So I've had that relationship and that connection there and then to basically go no more, um, just on the dime, stopped. No. Yeah. I mean, I can't, I can't, can't even really imagine. I suppose the emotions that would have been, no. you would have been going through. Like, how did you actually? I, I, I'm assuming, firstly, it was probably shock. Like, how, how were you yeah. feeling about that at the time, finding out that this child was not yours? It, it was, um, it was a grief process. It was a really intensive grief process, like as though somebody, you know, had, had a like just somebody died unexpectedly so somebody has a heart attack and just gone yeah and they're just not there anymore but the thing is that she is still around somewhere um a lady that i, I knew at the time said you know and it was hard but the lady at the time said you know what my husband's just passed away but when i miss him i can go and visit where he is and i can spend that time there yeah. until i feel okay and then and i know that what the situation is that little girl is still out there somewhere and so there's yeah. the feeling of being a parent without having that biological connection um but there was still that emotional connection um so i suppose that made me i, I thought that that made me fairly conscious about children moving forward and i thought i'd I'd be a good dad, but whether or not I was really in a position to be a dad, so I was kind of careful from that point forward to go, mm, I don't think I'd like this to happen yeah. again. Can we just go back um, a little bit when you, when obviously you, your partner had discovered that she was pregnant? Yeah. Do you guys, do you think you would have got married if that hadn't have been the situation at the time? Uh, not as soon as we did, um, definitely. And probably not. I, I doubt that it would have lasted. And I, I, it, the marriage was pretty much connected to the catalyst for that was this pub. Yeah. And have you had any any contact with her or the or the child since then, Troy? No. And and the well, once we saw the the courts through the divorce and settlement process that I had to go to a child psychologist and sit with her in a room and see how she interacted and how I interacted. And the, the child psychologist said to me, she goes, so how are you going to respond when Bub walks in? I was like, well, that's kind of up to her really. Like it was a year later and she was yeah. only little. It's like, so if she recognizes me, I'll respond to that. If she doesn't recognize me, I'll respond to that because it's not about my emotions and how much I was connected to her. It's about her mental well being. And as far as her being taken care of her mother and her family, there was never any questions about that at all. That was very, very loving, caring, um, supportive family for her. So there's never questions yep. about that. Um, but since then, no, because it's, yeah, it, it's not about me. But at the same time, as she gets to be 16, 18, you know, 25, 45, whatever, and goes, hang on, who was that guy that was there in that first three years? And what was the situation? We'll cross that bridge when we come to it. But we've got a few mm -hmm. more years yeah. to wait for that yet. 
Yeah. I mean, and I, I, I imagine that um, I mean, there could have been quite a bit of resentment around that whole situation as well with with your with your ex wife. Like, did you resent her for putting you in that position mm -hmm. and and taking this? I mean, she's basically taking this choice away from you to some degree. Yeah, twice. <laughs> like, you think, like at the start, obviously, you know, like it yeah. wasn't my choice that we made a conscious decision to get pregnant together, right? Um, yeah. And then at the end, that wasn't a conscious choice either. Uh, so, yeah, it there was there was a lot of how do I deal with that? How, like, what is my response going to be? And that's why I realised that my responses and my reactions don't have to be the same. Like my reaction is this hurts like a lot, but my response yeah. is retaliation or aggression or, you know, hurting another person because of that isn't going to achieve anything other than keeping that pain and that angst going. Um, you know, I'm like, what yeah. do I get out of that situation? And really it's nothing. So it's, um, I don't hold resentment towards her. I literally with everybody, it's, um, it's, it's acceptance. Uh, it is what it is. There was clearly a lesson in there to be learned. Uh, I just didn't know what it was at the time. But having had yeah. subsequent relationships um, and another one with pretty much the exact same situation without the wedding vows um, and the fact that she actually knew about mm -hmm. the first time and it still happened, so that was a whole devil kettle of fish. And other... Just accepting that other person where they are, and just so that's their emotional journey. That's where their their mindsets at, and I don't have to. That's, buy I mean, it. and that's that goes a lot to that says a lot about your character, Troy, as well. Um, and that that takes a really um, big person and someone that has you know this great strength of character to actually accept that and and accept it for what it is and move on and not have the resentment and not have that you know, fear saying, I mean, a lot of people can react in really negative and bad ways and it can really consume them for years. And I think the fact that you had handled it so well, particularly when you were so young, I mean, you are still in what, in your early 20s, like that's 20. such a young age to deal with something like this. Yeah, I and mean, that's, that's amazing in itself. I, were, I remember going to, going to the lawyer through the divorce process and I'd walk in and it, it was like my, my safe space. Right, I could just yeah. vent. I could just dump, you know. I'd, so, and I'd walk in, and he goes, you know, what, what do you want the outcome to be? And I was like, you know what, I just, I just want it over. I just want it done. Like, let's, let's both yeah. let's put this in a position where we can both move on with our lives in the way that we want to create them. And I remember clear as a bell, even today, uh, you know, all these years later, him saying, "I so wish I could put you in front of my other clients." <laughs> Because so many of them just want to rip the other person apart and you hurt yeah. me, so I'm going to hurt you as much as I can and I'm going to, there's one thing that you really care about, I'm not going to make sure that you don't get that just to prove that I still can. And yeah. I never bought into that philosophy. I just, it, it carries that, the negativity on instead of moving forward and starting that next chapter. Yeah, oh, look, I, I totally agree, but obviously when there is so much emotion involved, it is really hard to to, to be that um, mature about it as well because the natural reaction is to lash out and want to hurt them just like they've hurt you. So, I mean, that in itself is, is amazing. So um, let's go on to the second uh, part of the story um, when we had a repeat incident, so to speak, of uh, that first situation. Can you share what, what happened there? Uh, yeah, so, um, look, I've, I've made a, a long string of really bad choices when it comes to relationships. Um, my, my type uh, is generally not a physical thing. It's more of a narcissistic bitch type thing. Um, and, and just, <laughs> and, and so, yeah, it, it happened uh, again. Um, I met this girl and she was absolutely stunning and amazing. And we we're both in, in the youth work scene and, we got along really, really well. And then it was really short time into the relationship and hey, guess what? She's pregnant. Um, and so we go along and we didn't get married this time because I'm like, mm, not going to do that until we're absolutely yeah. definitely, positively sure that it's for the right reason, for the right person, not just because of that. Um, yeah. But look, I was, 
I was there in the delivery room. I was there with all of the activities and you know, changing bub and, you know, I'd come home from work and he'd run up to the door and put his arms up and do the whole daddy thing. Um, you know, when he was sick, I'd pick him up out of bed early in the morning, sit on the lounge with him, watch TV, you know, have that one-on-one time. So, yeah. again, for, for three years. And it was, it was like literally the day after his third birthday that um, we had the conversation around, look, I've been seeing this other guy for a while and I'm going to try it with him. And I'm like, you know what, if that's where you're at, go for it. Um, if, if you're there already, then there's no nothing going to happen. Yeah. You know, let's not try and rectify this. Let's just go and do your thing. Um, I said, let's just work out whatever we're going to do with, with access with Bob and, and just have that relationship and be able to communicate on that level. And she goes, you know what? I just don't think that's going to happen because it's not yours. Wow. It just, it, it just, it blows me the way that the fact that it happened once, but the fact that it happened twice yeah. and she knew your history, right? So she knew that that had happened in the past. Yeah. So... <laughs> So what, I mean, what, what was your reaction to that going, okay, this is this deja vu? Like what, <coughs> it's know, like, what is going on say, here? Clearly I have a type. Um, <laughs> so it was, the, the, again, and again, it was the, the, the loss of, it wasn't loss of the relationship. It was that grief process again. And again, yeah. the fact that Bub's still around and still doing stuff. And there's a little bit of an extra complication with the second one is that, with my first, my first wife, um, look, her family and I didn't really get along that much. You know, I'm not devastated about yeah. the fact that I'm not really contact with, um, in contact with them anymore. Her, but the second one, her mum and stepfather and I are actually really good friends. <laughs> we actually go camping with him and um, like we've been doing different things uh, and with his business yeah. for some time as well. So it's interesting that level of conversation that it's like, it's just not spoken about because it's there's this yeah because that would be could could be really awkward right it really could be awkward yeah but you yeah. know we you know it's been it's been a few years now um so we, it's settled to this point where she's aware that we're still in contact there's no it's not been hidden or anything yeah. uh we're very careful that if i'm going to be around at her parents place that they're not because of not wanting to cause issues with with Bob or anything and have that confusion there yeah. for him at all um it, we just we make it work did um I mean I, one of the things that I wrote about in, in the book um was around um women who uh trick trick guys into um having children and, and those types of situations did you at, at any point think, okay, she's she's tricked me, she oh, she's totally deceived me, um, like and and have that conversation with her, or what? Like, well, how did you feel about you that? Mean, I mean, I know that you you were like, yeah, let's move forward from a, a relationship point of view, but when it comes to you know a child, I mean, that's such a major part and a major emotional part of someone's life, right? Yeah. Um, oh, look, the. Again, it, I think it was just this this acceptance um, of you know this is the situation, and the, yeah. there is that how can you do this to me or like what were you thinking thought process, but we don't. I, I personally have the, this feeling that we don't necessarily have to externalize every thought process that we have, or mm -hmm. not directly at that person that we're having those thoughts about. Right? If you've got someone that's hurt you and all like in this situation i had a couple of people that that was my safe space and that's where i vented that to and that's where i got those feelings out so that yeah. i'd externalized it but it wasn't it wasn't to have that argument or that confrontation with that person particularly because that wasn't yeah. that wasn't going to help anybody it was just going to continue to cause issues so you know, I, I dealt with it that way and accepted that that's where she was and it didn't change how I felt about either of the kids at all. Um, yeah. 
but you know they they aren't mine and they they have they have the right to a, a life where they're not going to be confused by having this guy that's not dad but not there but not whatever either so it's not just about me and trying to work through that I for me I didn't feel that trying to work through that with that person or with those people specifically was actually going to be beneficial because it was just going to yeah. be okay. continuing that connection which wasn't really needed yeah <clears throat> um, so I mean given that this has happened um, a couple of times now how um, how do you feel or what are your thoughts about having children in the future do you still do you still want to be a dad? Are you very hesitant to do that? Like, you know, how do you feel? So I'm not sure whether or not I spoke to you about the situation with my second marriage with kids. Um, Maybe not, but look. Okay. I don't remember. So, <laughs> so, yeah, so the second partner with the child wasn't my second wife. Like I said, I have been married again as well. Yeah. Um, and she got very, very sick very quickly. She has multiple sclerosis um, and it was causing um, some effects on her body. And I remember we went on a trip and she just wasn't feeling right and was just off, right? Which wasn't her, like she was great. And I just adored the fact that she existed on the face of the earth, right? Um, yeah. Not like the first one, like this person, I was, this is the love of my life, hands down, no questions gobsmacked literally the second i saw this person i was done right that total hollywood moment movie moment of walking Love out the door, seeing, yep literally walked out the door yeah. saw her standing there walked back inside said to my friend that's it i'm done that's it I'm, it's her and so we were married 11 months later wow <clears throat> and it was did actually, she feel the same way did she have yeah, that instant connection yeah, like, was it a, a mutual thing yep Totally. Wow, that's, we that's totally... fabulous. I love that. So we, we moved in together within three weeks. We were married within 11 months. And on this, this holiday that we had, uh, we came back from the holiday and we went out to a music uh, gig one night. And she got this really sharp pain in the stomach. Like she wasn't feeling well. And then she got this really sharp pain in the stomach. Um, and we ended up in the hospital and she'd had a miscarriage. Wow. So okay. she'd been told that she wasn't able to conceive children because of the effect oh, wow. of EMS okay. had on her body. Yeah. So that was a decision. Like that was a conversation that we had was, you know, I, I can't give you children, like her saying, I can't give you children because this is the effect that it's had. And like, you know what? I'm okay with that. Even having had yeah. this situation before and she's like really, she's worked up about it because she's going, but you you clearly want to be a dad. You have been a dad. It sounds like you've been a great dad. Like, how can you not want to do that again? And I said, well, that whether that is a part of what we have or not, I'd still rather have us than not have us because we can't have that as well. Yeah. And then, <clears throat> yeah, she ended up having a miscarriage and then that was an emotional roller coaster because it was definitely mine for the first time and it was... Just it was challenging because then that thought process comes up of well, what if you know? And so we actually yeah. started uh, IVF, um, and we're actually granted um, because of the medical condition to do IVF, um, subsidised IVF. So we actually went through that project, about the process. So, yeah. uh, and she did actually get pregnant again, uh, but had another miscarriage, and so that then caused the, the start of a number of other issues and then she had some relapses and then the relationship fell over and it ended as well. But it's, it was, yeah, not able to then unexpectedly being pregnant and then going through the process, actively deciding to try to do that and then not being able to do that and getting comfortable with all of those different emotional peaks and valleys through that experience as well. Yeah, I mean, God, so many emotional peaks and valleys. Like, yeah, the, you know, the the highs and the and the, and the lows of that. I, I, I couldn't even imagine, um, you know, how you guys feel as in, individuals, but as a couple dealing with that. I mean, that would be of uh, so hard. And obviously, it, it ended up taking a toll on the relationship. Yeah, it it did. And look, it was one of the factors. There was you know, a couple of other factors as well, medical stuff, um, but. 
even now uh, or, or since in, in the, the couple of years since that's happened, um, <clears throat> I, it's the choices and the, res the lessons that we take from that and how that affects me and the choices that I make when I'm interacting with, with people in general. Yeah. And when I'm so, people say to me, oh, my God, you'd obviously never get married again after that happening. Well, but not necessarily. I mean, if the right person comes yeah. along, maybe. Uh, probably not quite so quickly, but, um, but not necessarily. The, the thing that I am more conscious of, though, is <clears throat> the effect that the kids, like the, the mindset and the thought process around the kids and like I see their mums and they're like, I can't do what I want to do and I can't be what I want to be, you know, and I wish I could, but I can't because I've got kids, right? And they've got yeah. that kind of mindset. Whereas I, now I'm very, very, very cautious about, <laughs> about whether or not this having kids is an option, shall we say. Um, yeah. And, and moving forward too, like what I'm doing now I also know that I absolutely could not do this and the way that I'm doing this and the impact and the, the challenges and the changes that are happening and the significant things that we're able to do collectively together with me and the team and the other businesses we're working with, if I had a partner and a child to come home to because that would be the priority because that yeah. family unit deserves that, that time and that energy and that attention and that love and that caring and taking that, it, it is a conscious decision. And it's actually, it's a conscious decision that I made that what I'm doing now is the impact and the legacy that I want to leave. And I haven't been able to do that previously in those situations. So, yeah. you know, I'd, I'd rather be doing this than have that. Yeah. So, I mean, it's, it sounds like you're still um, open to, so whatever happens, um, happens right moving forward like whether it takes you one direction or another perhaps yeah I look to be honest I, I also think in some ways I have had kids right like yeah. biologically maybe not but I have I've had that experience and so yeah. I don't I don't have this wide eye oh wouldn't it be awesome to have kids because it'd be so romantic sometimes it is hard <laughs> like, yeah, of course. Really yeah. You know, you just want to sit yeah. down on a Saturday afternoon with a glass of wine, but no, you've got a three year old to entertain that just, you know, just it feels like they've eaten a bag of jelly beans and they're just jumping off the walls. It's like, I just need <laughs> um, So, you know, the, and I think that that actually influences where I'm at as well, that I know that that's what is involved. It's not that I don't have yeah. any awareness. And so it's making a decision based off actually having information rather than just assumptions and emotions or the romantic notion of having a family and 15 kids and a white picket fence and all this sort of stuff. Now, I grew up in a fairly big family. My mum was one of six. We had 40 people at Christmas dinners and that was just our immediate family. Like there's yeah. the kids around, but, and all of my cousins, my, my nine cousins all have partners and they all have kids. Um, and they, some of them are enjoying it more than others. Um, but you know, it, it doesn't bother me. It, honestly, if, if I find, I, I definitely want to be, have that romantic partner, um, have no question, I'll probably get married again at some point, but whether we have kids or not, it's not really, it's not that that's what I'm, I'm not looking for somebody to marry yeah. to have kids with specifically. It's more about yeah. the, the career and the impact and you know, the, the stuff that you know that I'm doing these days and helping so many people in so many different ways to build their own businesses, but also in not-for-profit charity space and the millions of dollars that we're raising for projects in that space as well. So, so in that way, all those people are my children. <laughs> I've changed yeah, my look, life. That's there. true. And as you said, it's, it's all in how you look at it as well, right? Yeah. And, you, and you've got a really healthy way of, of looking at it, and that makes a massive difference to how you actually feel about it. Yeah. Yeah. It, and it's, I mean, you made it's a really good point before about... about... So there, I, go, go. So it's, like it's it's appreciating the position that we're in without having an expectation, right? Not expecting, yeah. that, not having judgment, not having this imposition of, oh, well, don't you think you should do this? No. You know, like yeah. if it doesn't drive, if you don't wake up the first thing in the morning and go, 
that is absolutely what I have to do every second of my day, then don't do it. True. Very true. Very true. Um, I, I really liked um, what you said before about the fact that you have got these insights now that, and, and, and when you were in that situation where you did have um, kids, you got a real, like a first hand look at, yeah, look, this is exactly what it is. You know, there, there's the, obviously the great side of it and, you know, and, and spending time with the, with the children and all, all the great stuff that you get from that. But as you said, it's also really damn hard. Yeah. Um, and there's sacrifices that you're making. And I think the fact that you have now got this insight and this different perspective makes actually a, a really big difference, I suppose, in the decisions that you'll make moving forward. And, and not a lot of people, I mean, most people obviously don't have that insight when they're having that conversation about, oh, okay, well, let's get married. Are we going to have kids? What's the, how many kids are we going to have? And so forth. And I think you sort of touched on it before when you said this romantic notion of what it's going to look like. When in reality, it's it's usually very different to that. Yeah. Um, so I think that's um, just the fact of you sharing that. I think uh, it would be great, I suppose, if all people could have those insights before they made a decision to go, oh, okay, yeah, that's definitively what I want. Because you know, once you make that decision, you can't go back a lot of the time, can you? Pretty much, yeah. And, and look, it's yeah. um, it would be it would be great if people could have an insight into what it's like. Probably not through the, the painful experience that I went through of, of having course, yeah. that. Uh, that was not, not so good. Um, but it, again, it was a learning experience. Um, but yeah, look, yeah. There, there, is, there are some absolutely phenomenal moments um, that I would never give back. But at the same time, yeah. like, you, you also, with having so many cousins with kids and things, like I get the experience of being, being the uncle and being the, the cousin and, you know, spending time so with you're not missing I, out. I love yeah. kids. No, but I, when they get tired and hungry and grumpy and sick, I get to hand them back. So <laughs> <laughs> it's like, eh, I like that part too. <laughs> yes, there you go. Um, oh, what a shame. <laughs> Cuddle time's over. Um, yeah, and, and that, that it's, so there's still a connection there. It's like I used to say I didn't like yeah. kids when I was one, but I've sort of developed an affection for them as I got older. And yeah. and I do, and I was I was a youth worker, so it's not like that I don't like kids or don't like being around them. It's just having a realistic ex appreciation for the impact that having a child has on so many other parts of what you do and who you are and what you can and can't do. And look, I, I look, yeah, just spent a couple of weeks in Thailand, and there were a couple of families there that we were talking to that. No, nope, I'm going to, you know, we brought our kids on our holiday because we're not going to be the kind of family that's not going to do this stuff just because we have kids, right? And that's great in that 15 seconds. And then two minutes later, you just see that the angst and the, the snapping between the parents because of the frustration of, oh, this was, why, you know, we just want to enjoy our holiday. It's like they're forcing themselves to enjoy the holiday because we're not yeah. going to be those parents that don't do this. Or... You know, the, the, the younger couples that go, oh, wouldn't it be so lovely to bring kids on a holiday? And for some people, it's great, right? But for others, yeah. it, it just isn't. And either way is, is okay. But I'm going to enjoy a few years of not having that for a while. Yeah. <laughs> At least a few well, years. Well, as you said, it's, it's, <clears throat> it's the choices that we make. Yeah. Um, and we have got choices. And there's nothing to say that one choice is wrong and one choice is right. No. It's just the choice that we make for ourselves because that's the right choice for us. And I think that's a really key thing um, around this whole, you know, children conversation. Um, Troy, if you, could have, if you could give guys in particular um, any advice around um, whether to um, have kids or not have kids or whether, or I suppose, if they're in similar circumstances probably more like that you've been in, how to react, um, what would you say to them? So there's a couple of things, couple of points that I touch on, a um, couple of responses. With the reaction bit, males reaction, reacting, um, I would actually say similarly to women um, as well, is that yeah. in similar situations like that, if there's a breakdown in a relationship and there is a child involved, um, it's not about you. And it's not about the other person. It is about the child. Yeah. It always has the yeah. child has the right 
to the best parenting that they and the best parents that they can possibly have. Um, and it's not about you. Everything else has to go out the window. Um, as for having, you know, having kids, I think it's about making the choice about it being, being right, but also being the right time. So for me, I might think, well, yeah, I probably, I could consider having another child, but it would have to be at some point in the future. And I think that's an important choice as well. So like to say, I don't ever want kids um, or to yeah. say, you know what? I want to make a conscious choice not to have kids at least in the next five years because I want to build this thing so that, so that I have something worthwhile to bring them into. Now, for me, being a yeah. youth worker, I've seen people who have, you know, kids having kids, literally, and bringing them into this yeah. environment where they can't afford to feed themselves and now they've got kids in that scenario and it's just painful and it hurts to see that. And so I would much rather get to a point where I'm like, you know what, this is the situation that I would want to bring a child into that I can spend work time and enough time with that child and now knowing what that is and how much time that takes yeah. and how much money is yeah. involved in emotional investment as well as financial investment. You know, so yeah. it's possible that I might want to have another child, but it would definitely be, you know, five to ten years in the future. So that would make me in my 40s. <clears throat> And then that opens up the whole question of, well, if you're in your 40s, aren't you too late to have a child? So for men, it's different because yeah. you've got Tony Randall, Mick Jagger, Hugh Hefner. They would have kids in their 70s, right? Like, yeah, not a massive fan of that, um, but go nuts. Best of British luck to you. Um, but you know, there is this age thing as well. Like you have to have kids by a certain age or you're just too old. Or, you know, you don't want to yeah. be taking kids to school and being thought that you're the grandparents on Grandparents' Day, you know, this sort of thing. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so there's choices around that as well. So I just think it's probably a little bit off topic, but it's making – it's not that I don't want to have kids. It's just that if I'm going to have kids, it's definitely going to be with the right person and in the right situation and to be able to provide something to that child that's not just a holy crap, now we're pregnant situation. Yeah, I think that's great advice. And um, I, I think that's, uh, you know, I think a lot of people should be considering um, you know, that exact thing or, you know, at right time, right person, uh, you know, is it all, and I, I, sometimes that doesn't always happen that way. You can't plan it to be the perfect time and, and so forth. But um, I think being a bit more conscious around the decision is, is something that probably more people need to can be a bit more considerate of as well. Yep. Um, so, Thank you. Like, um, I've, yeah, as, as I um, sort of prefaced before we started, you know, your, your story is unique. Um, I remember when we first, we, we first um, spoke about it, I, I think I was like this the whole time, like, oh, what the, oh, my God, like, you, you keep hitting me with all this stuff, and I was like, oh, my God, this is crazy. Um, but, you know, I, I'm really glad that you could come and, and share it because I think, um, letting people know about these sorts of things and being brave enough to share that story is, 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 is awesome. And it's a real testament to your character, Troy, in terms of how you deal with things in life. And I know um, how far you've come personally in your journey. Um, so from the bottom of my heart, thank you very much for coming in and sharing your story with, um, with me and, and the audience. I just, I think it's fabulous. And I think you're fabulous. So thank you. Thank you. So it's, it's a privilege and it's um, the ability to share share the story but also share the positivity around the story um and yeah. you know if if i can help one other person um sorry if there's a b52 or something going right over the building um then that's yeah the positivity and you know to say to people you're not alone you're not the only one and it's okay yeah. to make your own choice yeah yes it's all about that c word right that's it all right. I'll cool. talk to you again soon. Thank you so much, um, Troy. It's been great chatting with you. Um, I'll share you, um, the link with you. Um, this will go up on the um, YouTube channel um, in the next sort of 24 hours as well. So I'll make sure you get that. Um, but, but thank you for your time. Have a fabulous uh, evening. Hope you enjoy River Fire this evening. And, um, and we'll definitely catch up again really soon. Will do. Thanks, Tracy. Bye. Thanks, Troy. See you.